Welcome to Excellent Adventures, where I, your host, Reese Sweeney, take a step away from my duties as a radio and TV personality and give you a first-hand look at my other love, backyard chickens and homesteading. Take a listen to conversations I have with others who are in farming, homesteading, and connected brands. And some of those conversations go a little like this. She does say I have too much, though. So. She says I have too many, but I don't think I have enough. The chicken math started mathing. Yep, yep, it's never ending. I only started with like four laying hens. Now I have over 100 chickens and geese and quail. So the first question we ask everybody that comes on to the Excellent Adventures, what was your old cluck moment? The first thing that comes to mind is when the first time I got locked inside one of my own chicken coops. We talk about the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Now let's see who's on this episode of Excellent Adventures. We're here with another episode of Excellent Adventures. We have another special guest, Amanda of Peony Silkies. Uh, listen, Peony Puff Silkies. Let me make sure I get that name right. One of my favorite absolute favorite pages to follow i just got three brand new baby silkies i'm raising from from hatchlings myself she is my motivation to get into the fluff fluff nugget world and she has such incredible energy on her page her family and, and, and the, the little the little puff ball so let's get all the way into it how are you feeling today amanda i'm good we are getting over a cold here but chickens mm -hmm. don't sleep so we're up Mm -mm, they do not sleep. They don't sleep at all. <laughs> Let's talk about it first. Our first question is, what is your old cluck moment? At what moment did you realize I am a chicken mama? The biggest moment for me when I knew I was in trouble was when <laughs> I got my first silky at the farm store. And I came home and I Googled what colors do silkies come in. <laughs> and that was it. I was done. That'll do it. That will get you in trouble trying to find yeah. all the colors. That's what happened. Yeah. How many colors do you have now? I'm currently breeding 10 different colors. Uh, I've had to narrow it down. There was other colors that I did breed, but yes, I'm down to 10. Wow. That's <laughs> great. You're in Michigan? Yes, I am. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm so, I'm a little, a little glad you are because I will be there shopping right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love these little fluff nuggets. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. Like, how did you get started with chickens in general? It doesn't sound like you started with silkies. I didn't. I started, um, I shared a hobby farm with my aunt. Mm. She had retired racehorses off the track and she needed a place to keep them. So um, she bought a little farm and I lived there and took care of everybody. And my first chickens came from family farm and home. So um, they I raised, had them for about five years, and then I started getting into silky. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, family farm at home is that like a um like a store, like a tractor supply store yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we don't have that here, so I just I just want to be clear, make sure. That's pretty cool. So, how many did you start with? We started with um, ten, like pullets. Mm -hmm. And was completely convinced, like, oh, no, they're all going to be roosters. You know, that new <laughs> chicken person, fear of roosters. Um, but they all ended up being hens. And it just uh, went from there. So we had the great mix of just regular barnyard birds. And they were so sweet that I had a, an addiction after that. <laughs> right. Chicken math hit. When chicken math hit, what did it feel like? Where did you go next? So chicken math hit for me during COVID when we were all locked up. And then I decided that I needed more. And I found um, a breeder south of me that had partridge silkies. And then I convinced my dad and my husband to build another coop. So that is where we started. Okay. Okay. I do have a question. You just mentioned your husband. Yeah. Do you guys have the same birthday? Yes. That is crazy. How did you know that? I'm an investigative reporter. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I don't know if you know that about me. <laughs> <laughs> On my other job, I do radio. Okay. And like when I interview people, I want to know things. I want to be able to add certain things. But I was like, is this, is, could this be true? It is. Yes. <laughs> How did you guys find each other? <laughs> it's so weird too, because there's so many commonalities that we joke that we were separated at birth, but we definitely have two different moms. <laughs> well, I hope so. Yeah. Because <laughs> Michigan is not one of those states. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Did you guys get married on the same day, too? Please tell me. Yes, we did. We <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> that man has the easiest job ever. He can never forget a birthday anniversary. There is no special day for just me. No. <laughs> 
I'm sure he makes it special for you. It's probably no special day for him, although you're the special person. So true. Very true. It makes me feel guilty because, yeah, you're probably right. That is awesome. I only could wish. (laughs) Man, that's cool. So I I see, like, you guys do some stuff together. How involved are the family with the, like, operations and everything like that? So um, it's me and him. He uh-huh. um, is really like my heavy lifter and he, we call him the official poop duty. So he's in <laughs> charge of everything poopy. I like the double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. your duty. <laughs> it is duty to clean the duties. Right. And how did you get into breeding? Like, what was that? Give me the steps into getting into the breeding of the silkies. And now you're a dealer. Now you're a fluff bucket, a fluff yeah. butt dealer. Yeah. So, um, I had just my birds, they were all kind of together and I had an overflow of eggs one day and I was like, I don't know what to do with these. I think I'm going to put them on Etsy and sell them as hatching eggs. I didn't actually know that was a thing. Um, mm. and I had made so many sales in the first month that I was like, I, I found something. This mm-hmm. is something I want to do. And then I started doing my research on breeding and I knew that the birds that I had weren't as, um, I would say they were much more prettier than my very first silky that came from the farm store. Okay. okay. So I dove into that and started separating pens. And then I realized that um, breeding was actually a thing and Mm -hmm. um, that hatching eggs were a thing. So I jumped right in. Okay. I love that. Now I want to ask some specific questions when it comes down to that. You say you jumped on Etsy. I haven't used Etsy Etsy as a place or a place for me to actually get any of the products out. So how difficult was that trying to figure that piece out or, or what were the steps? If you don't mind sharing. No, not at all. Um, Etsy. Um, I sold different things, you know, chicken shirts and stuff, but they really don't want you selling eggs. They consider them live animals. Okay. And so me and Etsy went back and forth they would pull down my um, listings, but I still managed to sell. They didn't like words like hatching eggs. Um, so you would have to use things like chicken orbs. Um, mm. But once I gained um, some footing in it, I did switch from Etsy and moved over to eBay and Facebook and Instagram. And so that's taken a lot of pressure of trying to hide what I'm selling. Gotcha. I love it. I'm actually going to become a customer. I just hatched my first three silky eggs from my pet chicken. Yay. And now I'm going to be coming over to you guys to get more silkies because these silkies are the beautifulest little birds I've ever seen in my life. Yes, they're such a difference than your farm store bird and all of them deserve love. There's Mm -hmm. just a difference when you see a breeder quality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the way you guys ship and package and I kind of I saw like how much care you put into it, the transparency that you guys show what you do. It's really amazing. And it makes me think, you know, how responsible you are of a breeder. I definitely want to dive into that as well. Oh, thank you. We've reached that part of the show where we hook you up with some insider information. And this week, it's all about eating pet and pasture. And I got a 20% discount code for you. As farmers, we know the love and care it takes to raise happy and healthy animals. So choose the best when it comes to bedding, premium cut Timothy hay, and trees for your furry and feathery friends. So if you're looking for super absorbent hemp bedding or nesting pads for your laying ladies, look no further than Eaton Pet and Pasture. Check them out right now at EatonPetAndPasture.com and first-time shoppers get a 20% discount by typing in Reese at checkout. That's R-E-E-C at checkout. Now let's get back to another excellent adventure. So with, um, I'm gonna, with shipping eggs, you want to hope for a 50% hatch rate because mm-hmm. shipping gets tough on those eggs. So that's, you really do have to put some effort into packaging and sending them so mm-hmm. that they ha- um, have the best hatch rate possible. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, I know because the air pockets can move, all things, all types of variables can happen, especially when you're talking about distances. Yes. That is cool. So now you've got a bunch of silkies on the yard. Do you know how many chickens you have? No, I say I don't <laughs> count because it makes me accountable. Like, <laughs> I like it. We um, test uh, the National Poultry Improvement Plan. We test every year. Um, mm-hmm. And so we have to do a blood draws. And um, last year it was like two, 238, I think. Mm. And that didn't count for the little babies or so. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> you got a full kennel of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know. 
Man, that is cool, though. So how did you once you start getting into the, you know, the fine combs or what kind of do you need any specific licenses? I, I know you just talked about something that you're doing um, to check quality and genetics. So how does that how does that like how far deep down a rabbit hole does that go? So the National Poultry Improvement Plan is um, a national program that set aside that your flock is tested and that they test clean for I think it's called the Plorium disease. Mm -hmm. um, and what that certification does is it allows you to ship eggs birds over state lines. So if you stay in the state, you don't need to have that license. But if you want to ship, I ship all over, um, mm -hmm. then you need that. And then the database just keeps you active and you can actually go on that database. Anybody can. And you can see who is a certified breeder um, and able to ship as well. OK, cool. That's really good to know. Did not know that. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be looking now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make sure. And that is pretty cool, man. So do you um when, when you're trying to get different colors and different things, like what are you looking at? What are you going into? What's your mind frame? For me, I want to stay with your standard colors that are um, standard of perfection in that way. When people show their birds, mm -hmm. their specific colors that um, are show recognized. And then there's project colors that aren't yet show recognized. And I have a couple of those, too. So um, okay. you're really wanting to make sure color type foot. You want to make sure they have the big comb on their head that looks like a walnut and not a straight comb. Mm -hmm. So you want to breed towards those standards. OK, what what are those standards like the, the traditional colors or the recognized colors? So um, the most traditional that you're going to see at a show are the buff colored, which are like blonde, like a golden retriever mm -hmm. and white partridge. Um, and then you'll have your BBS, which is short for blue, black splash. Mm. Um, and then a lot of people do show paints and then you can show project colors. There just isn't a specific category for it. And a few of my friends have won titles and awards for showing project colors. OK, I think I've seen some of you because I saw like a Dalmatian looking one. Yeah, that's a paint. OK, OK, cool. I want one. And then I also um, have <laughs> modeled which they're more black. So <laughs> they're black <laughs> a little bit. OK, cool, cool, cool. That's re that's really good to know. My first silky was an all white silky uh, fluff nugget. Yeah, she passed away, but she was amazing. She get she got broody like every ten minutes, and she yep. to help that day, so. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, having uh, broody like right now, I probably have about thirty, mm. and it's so hard not to go out there and just shove eggs under them. <laughs> like, but I knew I would be overrun by chicks. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Her silkies are really good hens, like really good moms. They are. They're excellent, and they will take eggs. I just introduced a bunch of youngins. Mm -hmm. And one of my Rudy's jumped off her nest and just took them over. So oh, wow. um, she, it's great that hands off approach, right? You just yeah, throw right. these in there and mom takes them. <laughs> Got a surrogate mom, foster mom. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool, man. And I love your setup. Like, can you walk us through some of your setups with the, with your um, runs and stuff like that and what's in them? Yeah, definitely. So I'm set up in an old barn um, and my dad and my husband built it. It's almost like um, bowling alley alleys where each one is individual. Mm -hmm. um, and I have 10 separate pens. They on the inside, I do keep their food in their water and I use regular pine shavings. And then in their outside run, they have dirt floors. But I also add pine needles or leaves, depending on the season. Um, and then they have grass boxes, which are just like two by fours that we've built with some um chicken wire on top so the grass grows out of them okay but the chickens can't like take all the grass with them because i do um i don't free range everybody's gotcha. in a covered run yeah i mean they're they're models so i understand <laughs> right it's like my my i know my other chickens are jealous because my three <laughs> silkies they're pullets right and they're in this big rabbit hutch off the ground and their feet don't touch the ground <laughs> and they know it yeah <laughs> I know, it, and they just walk around all pompous and puff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's cool, man. That that is great to know. So that's that's a really cool setup. I, I haven't heard the pine needles before um, for like cedar shavings and stuff. I just started using some wheat straw in some of parts of my coop, but we spray it with this mite spray, and yeah. it's been really good. It's poultry safe and it's all natural, so we haven't had any outbreaks. Knock on wood. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah, we fight with mites all year round. There's always mm -hmm. 
something's always trying to get in there. Yeah, I can imagine. You might want to try it. it and I know that they uh, service your area. It's called Primo Guard. They, and they don't pay me to say this at all. It just, it's been working for us pretty good. Okay. <laughs> so I just like to share products that work. And they, um, it's all natural. I haven't had any issues with birds, like, you know, having a reaction to it in any type of way. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I had, I had mites once, used it. Mites went away. Every time we do a coop clean out or, or change out bed and we spray it down and we haven't had any issues. So love nice. to share that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wrote that down. Thank you. Cool. I'd see if I, if I can get some sent to you, that'd be great. Oh, perfect. Mm-hmm. Cool. I would so, definitely try it. Yeah. I, w- I would imagine mites or, or just pests in general because silkies do have the fur um, and they probably would be attractive and they don't get up too high off the ground. So in my, in my, when I had it, they never like, really um roosted it pretty high so uh, that would be a prime target correct yeah they um so i have about half of mine that want to roost but it's only like eight inches off the ground <laughs> yeah and then the other half sleep under the roost and get pooed on all night so there we go that yeah. just makes your cleanup more fun <laughs> or your husband's cleanup since he's <laughs> yeah. i love it yeah i love it. busy yeah, absolutely. So w- when Chicken Math hit me, I ended up with goats and I got pigs and ponies and everything. You ended up with 200 plus silkies. I did. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed that you just said that out loud. <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, I'm 56 <laughs> animals in on two acres. So I, and, and it's a bunch, of, it's probably, it's actually, it's more than that. But <laughs> right. I, mean, I don't want everybody to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. How was it with your like your county ordinances? Did you have to do anything special? Um, I didn't ask. Um, we were so when we bought this house, we bought it during um, COVID. Mm-hmm. And so we were zoned for a, a farm because there was a barn here. Oh, and we had just over two acres. So we were zoned for farm animals. I haven't uh, dabbled in goats yet, but that's because I like my landscaping. Yes. Don't don't dabble in goats if right. you like landscaping. And if you like fencing, or if you like oh. things you don't want them into, or if you like peace. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. dabble in goats. I'm not there yet. <laughs> right. I definitely understand. <laughs> um what kind of uh predators do you guys have and how is it trying to keep everybody safe? So we have um coyote, fox, mink. Um, lots of hawks. That's why I don't free range. Mm -hmm. Um, my predators are handled by my dogs. I have two very large farm dogs. I have a pit bull border collie and a coon hound great Dane. Um, Oh, you got, you got security covered. I do. And they have, um, handled even the largest of animals. My dogs have taken care of for me. Oh, that's awesome. And I saw the beautiful, uh, the beautiful black dog. I've seen them, seen him on your page with the gold yeah. chain and everything. And I, <laughs> I say he's, he's doing this job because he he's is. Doing well. Yeah, they do a really good job. And they seem like they're pretty good with around the birds. They are. I've only had one incident where um, my uh, pit bull mix grabbed one, but there was a chicken fight. And so mm-hmm. I think he was just drawn to the tangling of them causing some chaos. Um, yeah. But he was fine. I got the chicken. He just brought him to me. So he's probably just doing his job. <laughs> he's doing, he's being bad mom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty neat. So how are silky, the temperament of silky roosters overall? I know every chick is different. I, you know, I've seen some of the same breed. Some will be cool. Some be a-holes. But yes. um, I, I don't I haven't experienced a silky rooster yet. So what's the temperament like? So I have about 40 roosters um, and everybody <laughs> does need to get along because I do have so many. Um, mm-hmm. Usually pretty docile, pretty chill. And I want to give them as much respect as possible because they do an excellent job. Mm-hmm. Um, we've only ever had. One mean rooster that we kept, um, we won't keep them if they're aggressive towards right. us because it causes so much trouble. I don't need that when I'm in there. Um, right. But we did keep one and he was terrible and the farm mascot and we just let him be bad as life. So um, <laughs> he stayed until the end of his life. And then um, when he passed, we buried him out back. And when I mow, 
I just drive over them and say, hi, you dumb dumb. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's it. And I love that you uh, are, are so in tune with the bird's temperament because that helps with breeding as well. I know that's how we used to do it with dogs. Like if we had a dog that was, you know, a little aggressive or something like that, we would immediately get him fixed and just let him be a pet. Yep. The same. Yep. We will do some pet quality. Um, mm -hmm. And there are some farms around here who will take roosters and they mm -hmm. just free range them and let them live their life out. Uh, mm -hmm. And those are the people that I like to work with because um, those roosters will then get to go on and still live a really good life. That's cool. It's always great to have that community. And speaking of community, I want to talk about social media because obviously that's how we met. Got to see your incredible setup and everything like that. Big fan of what you do. But how has social media been to you and, and how has it um, how is the social media community for you? So I started on Instagram and I just I call it my happy place. It's a beautiful place and everybody seems really kind. Um, and so I enjoy sharing on there. I recently, I would say within the last year, started doing more on Facebook and um, the personal outreach there has been more. There's been a lot more interest and participation. So I've enjoyed being there as well. But um, there's a lot of um, nitpickery in like chicken world, which is surprising for me. I, I'm not sure why everybody needs to have an opinion and complain and point things out. And um, so that that's been different for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but uh, Instagram, I enjoy. It's happy. Yeah, I kind of see the same thing in Facebook. I don't see. I, well, coming from the entertainment world, right? It is dramatically different in the chicken world, per se, on social media. It's so much more peaceful, so much more yeah. helpful and happy, right? Yeah. But what I notice on Facebook, the people that have opinions usually don't have chickens. <laughs> 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 it's always the person who doesn't have any chickens. Right. And they know best. Right. <laughs> that's what I see. Yeah. That's kind of, I always tease and say, like, for me, Facebook is a lot like uh, Walmart on a Friday night. Definitely going to be <laughs> lots of entertainment and yes. personality. Yeah, lots of SpongeBob pajama pants. percent. <laughs> 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 lots of personalities. Now I love that. Are you in uh, any uh, chicken groups or communities on those social platforms? So um, we have a um, little girl group, not little girl, but so the chicken mafia. It mm -hmm. came as something that just kind of unfolded because somebody in the chicken world was mad and somebody spoke up and they capitalized and said, I knew that Silky Mafia would come after me. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of just took it and ran with it. I asked a girlfriend out in California, like, what does she mean by this Silky Mafia? And she <laughs> said, well, Michigan's got a lot of those breeders and they all have something to say. Hmm. So we kind of took it and just grouped up and said, we're going to turn that into something more positive and just have a bunch of breeders supporting other breeders. I like that. I really like the people to come together and make a safe space. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the name might sound silly with it being called the mafia, but mm -hmm. we really have each other's backs and we support each other. If I don't have something that you're looking for, I can get you to who does. Oh, that's awesome. And that's a good, that's enough room for everybody to grow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's definitely. pretty cool. I like the mafia thing though. <laughs> <laughs> in your fields, we got them silkies. Like <laughs> we definitely live up to it. And we're actually having um, an event August 4th at my house and mm. in our own little silky expo. And some of Michigan's top breeders will be here. I'm probably going to regret having it at my house, but. <laughs> Let it let it go. Just, yeah. just let it happen. <laughs> cool with it. That's cool. That is really cool. I've seen I've seen um something like that at a couple of places when they everybody came and they put on their booties to do biosecurity and all that stuff. So Oh yeah, a, we got that. Cool event. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. I, I wish I was part of the mafia now. I wanna Well, wanna you come. can fly in up and set up a table. We'd love to have you. There we go. There we go. I'll check it out. When we get finished. I'm going to check it out. Check my schedule. 
What are um some of the, the challenges when it comes to climate there with silkies? I know sometimes the bantams don't do as great in the um in the cold, extreme cold or extreme heat. Yeah, so we do get cold. We get negative temperatures and for days on end. I don't um one of my focuses with breeding is that I keep a really strong, healthy bird. Mm. Um, and so I don't supplement any kind of heat or anything, but there are some things that I do. Uh, I don't like to give treats in general, but at the end of the day, once I know my birds have had all their feed and all the vitamins in the day, I will do corn right before bedtime just to okay. warm them up. But yeah. I don't like to use it as a full on feed. We've reached that part of the show where we hook you up with some insider information. And this time it's some egg side information. Y'all know what I mean. Because <laughs> people ask me all the time, how do you get your chickens so fluffy and healthy and happy? And their eggs are so bright, beautiful, and they taste delicious too. I would love to dedicate all those things to me coming in and having a great time in that chicken coop every day and shaking it up with those ladies. But the fact is, it comes from a healthy and balanced diet of Purina's Laina. That's the brand we use. Whether you've got laying hens and you want to go with the Purina Laina plus Omega-3 or you've got a bunch of baby chicks running around in your brooder and you go with that Purina Start and Grow Crumble you can't lose. I know we haven't. So visit their website today and in three easy steps you can get discount coupons for the Purina product that's right for some great nutrition for your animals. I did it myself and it only took me about two minutes. It's absolutely worth it. And to make things easier we have the hyperlink on our website Black Yard Chicken Com. Just look under product of the month and you'll see the link right there to go and try your Purina feed greatness. And through their trial program, they can pair you with the right nutrition and let you try it with your animals and see the results. Now I can tell you all day how Purina feed greatness has been absolutely phenomenal for my chickens, goats, ducks, and rabbits. But you can see for yourself, go to blackyardchickens with a Z.com. Now let's get back to this week's adventure. Um, right, right. We straw and in their bedding in the winters. And if if it's really bad with wind chill, we actually just leave them inside their coops for the day. Mm -hmm. And then also heated waterers. That's that's life saving out here because uh, I'm not spending my days kicking frozen water buckets <laughs> like me. That's yeah. make sure I will have heated water. This is the last winter because um, usually in Georgia, it doesn't get too crazy. But we got uh, down in like the eights, nines, tens for like almost a few weeks straight. And I was like, nah, this is not this is not what I want to do. Yeah, you're. <laughs> I can't believe that you guys got that cold. So I feel yeah. for you. <laughs> moved here to get away from that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I would pack up and take everybody to Florida if I could. Man. I'm yeah. this close. <laughs> yeah, same. This close. Tell me about care. Like when it comes to silkies, I, I've seen you do butt trims and stuff like that. So like, what are some of the, some of the care things that you need to do for these birds and specifically so, that breed? Yes. With the silkies, um, I trim around their eyes uh, mm. so that they can see and <laughs> around their butts. That actually helps, um, you know, they sit on the ground at night. They don't roost. So they're making messes, but also I keep their butts trimmed up because of breeding. Okay. Um, and so that increases your fertility rates. Mm. One of the biggest issues that you're going to run into with silkies is vitamin deficiencies. They're really prone to it. So okay. um, I don't feed any kind of treats. They stay on calm block flock maker crumble um, mm -hmm. from hatch all the way through adulthood. And that's all they get. Every once in a while, they get some treats if it's really hot. Um, but I like to keep them like in, I would say like champion form. They got to stay healthy. So um, I love <laughs> you have to um, supplement to. And then we do have a first aid kit on hand if we have any suffers for them deficiency then okay. we have a process with that okay cool really good stuff to know i i my experience with my band of breeds they weren't the brightest nope. <laughs> birds not the brightest couldn't find the door a few nights that's that's why god made them pretty because yep. they're not very smart <laughs> Okay. I had to make sure it wasn't just mine because maybe I was doing something wrong. No. <laughs> okay. God knew what he was doing as always. That's right. <laughs> that is cool. So now that, that is great information on care. Um, if you had to give someone some advice that were just starting to get into this world, what would be like some top things they need to know? 
top things, do your research because silkies do have special needs. You need to be able to um, notice if they're struggling with something. The other mm -hmm. thing that's really hard with silkies is they are so fluffy that if something goes on with them, if they catch worms or there's something with their liver or their kidneys, you can't tell if they're losing weight on you. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And so uh, health checks are important. And honestly, there are going to be times where unfortunately you walk out and your favorite silky is gone. Mm. Uh, you just don't know what happened. They hide illness really well. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to mine. Oh. Yep. She seemed to be fine. And the next day, no more fluff bucket. Yep. Just done. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I try to, um, I handle mine a lot, but you've probably seen that in my videos that I'm always bothering them. Uh, <laughs> picking them up and holding them and checking them helps me gauge their body weight and mm -hmm. um, to know if they're doing well or not. Got you. Now you say your husband does all the heavy lifting, but I've seen you with these 50 pound bags <laughs> and all of this uh, and, and the bedding and all of those big bags and stuff like that. Is this a secret, uh, like a, a secret regimen that you're doing? Or are we going to have a fitness video coming out soon? <laughs> I am anti-fitness. So <laughs> I am a candy addict. And so my main exercise comes from going to the farm store and loading up. I love that. that is, I mean, it's good exercise. And, and it's also something that has to be done. It has to be done. Yep. There That's has cool. been times where I've loaded up my truck and when I've got home, I've just pushed it all off the tailgate and left it in the yard for my <laughs> husband. So I'm not going to lie about that. I have left it for him. Hey, man, it's no problem with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> he needs exercise, too. <laughs> I just want him to feel included. There you go. I love it. I love the wording. <laughs> <laughs> How has this been for you when it comes to like mental health? I know with me, it helps me a lot when I get to go outside, be around the animals, just be out in the sun. Um, has it helped you? Did you see a difference? So, yes, I actually ran after school programs in Flint, Michigan um, mm. for quite a few years. And uh, even during the water crisis, I was working and I just was starting to get burned out. And that's when my aunt um, decided to do the hobby farm. Mm -hmm. My, I feel like my brain just completely adjusted to how it should be. Peace mm -hmm. came, um, even though you got to get up and do chores and deal with, you know, death and poo, there is a peace that comes with just waking up every morning, taking care of the animals, seeing that they're happy, um, and making contact with people who are interested also in raising them. I think mental health, everybody should have a couple chickens. Me too. I've been pushing. I'm going to run for president one day and that'll be my like my whole thing, my campaign. I had read some article and I don't know. You can fact check me, but it was about like some government gave every family like three chickens or something. And I'm like, that needs to like that's a blessing. Yeah. It reduced food waste. It also gave people sustainability when it came down to protein. So I think it was a good thing. I'm actually writing my thesis on that. I'm going to. I know I, I don't look smart at all, but I'm doing like a uh, I'm getting my master's in environmental science right now. Yeah. And my thesis in that court in one of my courses is just about the uh, adding chickens to reduce food waste in urban areas. So I could definitely see that these wouldn't be show chickens, though, because these chickens oh. are eating regular like a feed, right? A regular grain yeah. pellet feed or crumble. And then they would be eating everything coming out the house that's not toxic for chickens. <laughs> hey, that's great. That's how I used to take care of all of our food scraps when we had regular farm store chickens. And then we're so happy. They loved their pasta salad. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think they think they're worms. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now I think I'm going to have to get some spaghetti together and see what happens. That'll be my next video. There we go. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll be the first one in the comments. <laughs> Watching two chickens fight over spaghetti is definitely <laughs> a fun time. All right. I'm adding that to the list. There we go. What can we expect from you guys um, um, coming up soon? Or do you have uh, any specials coming out? Any chicks that you, you know, you want to show people that they can be able to add to their flock or being able to show? So what you'll see from me is I like to keep it really honest. You're going to see me with no makeup in my pajamas, in my coops, doing what needs to be done. 
Um, and you're also going to see the Silky Mafia August 4th. There's probably going to be quite a bit of um, videos for that. The breeders that are coming are bringing everything from silkies to Polish, uh, peacock, ducks, and bunnies. So mm -hmm. um, there's going to be probably a lot of that. And there's even people who are saying they're coming from out of state. So we're super excited um, to really spend the day as the mafia and get chickens into people's hands. I love that. So my last two questions are really based on show show chickens. Um, what are some things that you look for with a show chicken? And then two, how do you transport them safely to these different shows? All right. So I don't personally show. Okay. Um, and that's just because I haven't got off my butt to do it yet. But um, I do choose all the time in my pen and I keep an eye on them like this is the one I would. So mm -hmm. it would be your wing type. Um, and how they stand, their body built. They need to have the dark black skin, um, the walnut comb, five toes, and the toes need to be separated specifically. A couple of my girlfriends, Happy Peeps and Sheeps, um, she has started showing and she's doing an outstanding job. She is going to be the queen with all the trophies. Okay. Um, yeah. And then so another girlfriend of mine, Condon Acres, she shows and she has won some spots with the Millie Floor, which is a silky project color. So she's done well with those as well. OK. With um, transporting, we just actually went through this. We had a uh, person out in Missouri who wanted to buy a bunch of our birds and Laura from Happy Peeps and Sheeps ended up taking them out there. Um, you really do have to worry about, you know, disease and um, spread of that stuff. Fortunately yeah. for us, Laura only took our birds. So we already share cooties. We buy from each other. <laughs> Got um, you. So, yeah, so we're already in it together. So sending off all of our birds together wasn't going to be an issue. But if you are mixing in with birds that you don't know, you do run the chance of passing germs on. No. Nah. Now that makes so much sense. And it's really good to share that. And I'm glad that you guys already have the same cooties. So it makes <laughs> <sense>. <laughs> now, man, I really appreciate the time and, and your energy is always incredible on social media. It's showing here on this podcast. Thank you so much for, for coming on and talking about all of these tips and tricks and, and just, just lessons that we can go on and use later. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Absolutely. We can't wait to see what's next in your next post. The only thing I'm worried about is when you're on top of the barn doing things. <laughs> right? Be careful. <laughs> no farmer has time to be careful. Exactly. I know. <laughs> I twisted my ankle yesterday. I came in, I came into our studio limp and my dad was like, what's wrong with you? I said, I zigged and the chicken zagged. That's right. <laughs> And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, I mean, that's life. You just got to walk it off because they depend on you. Absolutely. Once again, thank you, Amanda. We appreciate you. You've been a, a very special guest and we can't wait to talk to you again. And I would love for you to hook us up with some of your, uh, some of the, the groups you just mentioned so we can get them on the show as well. Get their story out too. Definitely. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Excellent Adventures powered by Blackyard Chickens. Now, if you think you want to raise your own backyard flock, here's a site for you. Blackyardchickens.com. We make entertaining videos about raising baby chicks from scratch. You know what I mean by from scratch, right? Or maybe you want to learn how to take care of your own big chickens or hens and get those fresh eggs. Building a coop or buying a coop, having the necessary things inside that coop to get great egg production. You'll learn a lot of the neat tricks I've picked up along the way from other chicken enthusiasts. And you can get pretty eggs just like those. So follow us on social media and check us out on our YouTube channel. Bye.